Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to check out the inner workings of the task system in Battle Royale Tycoon. We're going to take the task system we have created so far and figure out how we can use multiple task systems with multiple task types. Let's begin. So we previously made this scene in here. We have a complex task that is being executed by the worker. The task is to take a weapon to a weapon slot. The task can only be executed if the weapon slot is available, which is represented when this is in gray. Now the weapon slot itself destroys the weapon that is placed there after 5 seconds, just so it can always keep being empty. So if I click on the left mouse button, I spawn a weapon, he occupies that and he goes there. Now let's move him away, just so we can see, and spawn another one and another one, and when that one vanishes, he grabs the other one. So he's validating the task to take this weapon to a slot, and he only executes it once that slot is available. All right, so that's our fully functioning task system so far. The game is still in development, so if you like the concept, go to the Steam page, add it to your wish list, and follow. Let's look at the task system. So in this class in here, we have all of the task system code. We can add, ca add tasks, request tasks, queue tasks, and so on. And the main thing we have in here is the task type. So right now you can create a task system and it can work with any one of these tasks. If you want to add another task to the system, it's quite simple. We just add another task down here and everything works. But if we do things this way, then after a while this class will become huge and contain tasks for completely different logic systems. That's not very clean code. So let's modify the task system to keep the task list handling in here, but the task types defined elsewhere. So let's first of all rename this to be called task base, since this will be the base task class for every other task that we want to create. And up here on the task system, we're going to make this class with a generic type. And we're going to call that generic type T task. That will be the type of task. Where T task must extend task base. So let's copy the task base outside and the same thing with that task. So let's copy it out here. Now again in here, let's rename all references of task base in here to be of type T task. This is so we can create a specific task system with a specific task class. So let's rename all of this. All right, so we now have the task system set up to use a custom generic class. We're going to apply the same thing to the queue task. This will also receive a T task where T task implements task base. And here we're not using task base, but rather T task. And down here, when we create a queue task, is of type T task, and same thing in here. All right, so we have successfully converted the entire task system to now work with generics. You'll see why this is important in a second. So now we want to take the specific tasks away from the task system. So let's go into the game handler. And down here, let's make a public class. And we're going to call it task. And we're going to copy all of these specific classes that we created previously. They're all going to be defined in the game handler class instead of in the task system itself. In here, all we have is an empty task base class for anything we want to apply to every single task type. So in here, first of all, we need to define the action, which is in the system namespace. All right. And now, as you can see, the task system has an error because we need to use it with a generic. And the generic type we're going to use is the type task that is defined in here. And the type task, of course, needs to extend the CM task system dot task base. And all of these, instead of being of type task base, you are of type task, which obviously itself is of type task base. So go up here and we need to set all of these references. Alright, so we now have completely modified everything to use this task type that is defined in this class in here. And now as you can see, 
this all implementation is defined in here instead of being in the task system. The task system itself does not care how the tasks are implemented. He just cares that they extend task base and everything works with it. So if you go into game handler, we got the task types defined in here and they are executed the same way as previously. All right, so let's test and everything should be working exactly the same as before. All right, here he is, and yep, he can still move to position. I can click, he goes and occupies that, and everything still works perfectly. So, everything still works the same, but now we have the task types completely decoupled from the task system itself. So now you can see the real purpose of doing all of that, which is so we can create another task system with a different task type. We're still going to have our first worker executing the first type of tasks, but we're going to spawn a second worker that will execute a different type of tasks. The second worker will grab a weapon from a occupied weapon slot and simply take it away. So let's go up here and set things up for that. So let's create the task that the transporter worker will execute. So let's go down here. We have this task for the first task system. And now let's make another public class, call it transporter task. And it's going to also implement task base. So in here, let's make a subclass following the same pattern that we defined up here. And we're going to call it take weapon from slot to position. And this will extend the transporter task. Inside, we need the information that the worker will require. So first of all, probably factor three for the weapon slot position. Then we need a public vector three for the target position. Then we need a public action to grab the weapon and a public action to drop the weapon. And the action will take the worker task AI as an argument. Okay, great. So the transported task type is now set up. Now we can go up here to create the second task system. So in here, let's say the transporter task system instead of being a task system using the task type we're going to create task system using the transporter task type and down here we're going to instantiate it the same as before all right so as you can see we got two different task systems working with two different task types this system will not accept a task of this type and this system will not accept a task of this type this way our code is very clean and nicely separated now, obviously, we need to create a second worker that will execute the second task types. So in order to do that, we need a worker that will execute different tasks. So let's duplicate our worker task AI. So let's name this one worker transporter task AI. OK, so here we have a duplication of our regular worker task AI. And now in here, as you can see, this worker will not be working with this type of task, but rather the other, the transport type of task. That's the task system that he will actually receive. So if you go down here, when you request the task, the task will not be of this type, but rather of the transporter task type. And he will not have these types as a possibility, but rather the transporter task dot take weapon to slot from slot to position. That is the only type that he can now execute. And we're going to copy that in there. And let's make a function to do that. We can remove all of these. And essentially, we're going to do the same as this one. So let's name this with this. All right, so in here, we move to the weapon slot position. We grab the weapon. Then we move to the target position, and we drop the weapon. Now, when we grab the weapon, as you can see, this is an error, since we have to use this script so let's go in here on the task type on the definition in here on the action instead of using a worker task ai we're using a worker transporter task ai and now in here everything is working so this one receives a transporter task and executes it exactly okay great and now on the game handler let's actually create that second type of worker so we're going to create a worker as previously let's put it on 550 yeah sure and instead of adding the component of worker task AI, we're going to add a transporter task AI. So this one, let's copy and put it in here. And when we set it up, instead of giving the first task system, we're going to give it the transporter task system. So let's store reference to that for the worker transporter task AI. And this is what we're going to set it up with the transporter task system. 
All right, so the second worker should now be working. We are currently not adding anything to this task system, so the second worker should just stay idle, but let's compile and see if everything is working. Okay, so there's the worker, and if I click, I can still tell the first worker to move, but the second one, since he's working with a completely different task system, he's not listening to the first task system. Okay, great. Now let's actually set up the task for the second worker. So let's test the second worker only. So we're going to spawn a weapon, occupy this weapon slot, and then create the task for the second worker to take it away. So let's go down here into the weapon slot and let's remove the code to automatically destroy since we no longer need this. All right, good. And up here, let's spawn a weapon, a pistol game object. So let's spawn it right here. And we're going to tell the weapon slot to set the weapon transform to this one. So as soon as it starts, it won't be occupied with this newly created pistol. And let's put it on top of there. Okay, great. So now as soon as we spawn and as soon as we set the weapon transform, when we do that in here, now if this one, if this is not null, then that means something has been added to this weapon slot. So it's in here that we want to create the task that will tell the transporter to take whatever is in here and take it away. So we're going to create a transporter task dot take weapon. Yep, that's the task. And we're going to create that task, which will then be added to the transporter task system. So let's go up here and actually make this a static so we can access it from in the inside there. So now let's fill out the information for this task. For the weapon slot position, it's this get position. For the target position, let's simply push it somewhere to the right. So get position plus new vector three, and let's push it somewhere on the right. For the grab weapon, we're going to do very much what we did in here. So let's copy this code to keep things simple. The only difference being that it doesn't take a worker task AI, but rather a worker transporter task AI. And for the game object that we're going to move, it will be this weapon transform, which is the one that is currently inside. So that's what we're going to use to set the parent to that worker transporter and to set the parent back to null. Now we no longer need to arrive that anything has arrived. Okay, just like that, great. And when he does grab the weapon, that's when we're going to set this weapon transform back to null. All right, so we should now be correctly adding a task to take the weapon away whenever a weapon is added. So when you call this, if you call it without a null, that means something has been added to this weapon slot. And we're going to create a task to take whatever is in here and send it away. We're going to send it somewhere on the right and we're adding it to the transport task system. And we have this worker, the secondary worker, the transporter worker is the one listening to that transporter task system. All right, so let's see if that is all working. All right, there's the second worker. He's going there, he grabs it. You can see that it's now empty and he's taking it away and there he goes. Okay, great, so the second worker is working perfectly. Now let's set it up so we have both workers working at the same time, but each of them doing different tasks. All right, so now in here, let's simply stop it from being occupied at start. So at start, the weapon slot should be empty. And when we press the left mouse button, a pistol should be spawned and it will enqueue the task to go to the slot and so on and so forth. So now both of them should be working at the same time. All right, so as you can see, I got my two workers in here. I have the first worker and the transporter worker. In the middle, I have a weapon slot. Now, when I click the left mouse button, it should spawn a weapon sprite, and this worker will take the sprite to there, place it the weapon in the weapon slot. As soon as it's dropped in there, this one will grab it and move it away. So let's see if all that is working. I click. And yep, that one is occupied, he's going. As soon as he drops, this one re receives the task, he grabs the weapon and he's moving away. He drops it and he's requesting another task. So I go there, grab, drop, and that one is doing the same and I can spawn multiple. Now that one is waiting, now that one is empty. He goes, he drops it and so on and so forth. Okay, great. So now let's add multiple weapon slots to see the whole thing in constant movement. All right, so let's go up here and make a couple more weapon slots. We're going to create a weapon slot list instead of just having one. So it's a weapon slot, weapon slot list.
All right, so we are now adding multiple slots to the weapon slot list. And in here, when we are def when we are looking for a valid weapon slot, so let's go. Alright, so we are going through all of the weapon slots in the weapon slot list. If we find an empty one, then we send them as normal. If not, we keep searching. If we go through all of them and not a single one of them is empty, then we simply keep waiting. Alright, so everything else should be working perfectly. So let's test. Alright, here are the two workers with the weapon slots in the middle. And when I spawn, he goes and he's gonna drop in that one. When he drops, that one goes and he takes it away somewhere to the right and he drops it in there. Okay, great. So it's working perfectly fine with just one. Now let's try spawning multiple pistols. So there you go, spawn, spawn, spawn. And the tasks are automatically dequeued whenever something is empty. So let's spawn a couple more. And as you can see, he goes, he drops them in there. And that one, when something is dropped, he receives a task. Now he goes, he drops that one, and now you can see that he's waiting because all of them are occupied. When that one grabs, it's empty, he grabs, he goes, and he drops. Okay, great! So we have a pretty complex system all working perfectly using two different task systems. This worker doesn't care, doesn't know that someone is taking something away, he only knows if this one is occupied or not. And this one, the same thing, doesn't know if someone is grabbing weapons and dropping them in there. He only knows if the weapon slot that he wants, if it is empty or occupied. If it is occupied, he simply executes his action and takes it away. So we have two systems working in tandem, but each of them is completely ignorant of the other one. So the code is very nice and cleanly separated. So this is a very clear example of how to use the task system to easily create very complex behaviors where different workers are doing different things. And as you saw with the creation of the second task type, we didn't need to touch the task system at all. All we need to do is set up the task types, how to spawn the tasks, and how to execute them. Everything else works flawlessly. So there you have it. We modified the task system to keep it clean and decoupled from the specific task types. We can now easily make multiple task systems that work with different task types and have different tasks with different executions. So in this series, we cover the creation of a task system, which is an easy way to execute specific tasks. You can see the system in action in Battle Royale Tycoon. It is used for executing all the various tasks that you can see, like taking weapons to their spawn positions, cleaning up the arena, or grabbing a weapon from the workshop item slot, repairing it, and sending it back to the item slot so it can be transported away by transporter units. Again, the game is still in development, so if you like the concept, go to the Steam page, add it to your wishlist, and follow. I hope you enjoyed this series and learned something useful from it. Now go ahead and apply it to your own games. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.